move on next to e streaming right e sports and e streaming for the longest amount of time used to go hand in glove but now i think e streaming is also evolved right from just being about e sports now has become like a form of real form of entertainment for people so anirudh maybe would love to get your thoughts given loco obviously is one of the biggest uh, home grown plat- destinations for e streaming right on how the space has really evolved right from being one that is dedicated to sports to now that is now really coming up as an alternate form of entertainment right people are now actually budgeting if i were to spend say 2 hours on tiktok ads that time is probably being spent here over and above the additional time that is getting created right so would love to get your thoughts on how the overall space has evolved in terms of the viewers what kind of viewers are seeing it and also in terms of the streamers right what does it take to be the right streamer yeah i think it's a i mean the time spent story is actually kind of crazy right uh, we are seeing uh, on our platform even someone who's following maybe 10 streamers they're spending daily time spent is 1 hour 10 minutes right which is crazy and it's 15 20 minute sessions right so long form viewing this is not you know uh, versus here tiktok which is you know sh- shorter form viewing um so it's a really interesting different sort of if you draw that quadrant which i always draw if you to divide media platforms right uh, into long form and short form and uh, kind of unproduced ak authentic content and produced content live is traditionally been very difficult to do uh, well live and quality are orthogonal to each other because you just don't get uh, time to do something again you can't do retakes whatever so general live streaming was hard to do game streaming gave you a prompt and so it was easy worst case you could always give some commentary even if you were not talented of course if you were talented you could do uh, wonders with that sort of uh, you know prompt so i think gaming is really helped live and live is the sort of center or the center of the gaming universe i think the big thing that's happened is uh, you know these games as mani said 2019 the fact that internet we finally went from kind of dollar a gig to 10 cents a gig you saw a lot of people playing these games these games had the right mix of skill and strategy that makes them interesting to watch and once you have fan bases developed for individual streamers then people just want to hang out with them right now when i was a kid you know i let's say i'm a big sachin fan then i would love to be in a net with sachin right you can do that today with these guys you can go to a custom room in loco we have a one click solution to do that also so you can actually get and one of the you know for me one of the early moments which i was completely blown away by was one of the gamers was in irangal which is a map in bgmi and people saw him and they started dropping their weapons in front of him like as if they met like salman khan or shahrukh khan on a on a map and they were like are bhai mil gaya bhai mil gaya bhai mil gaya like it was like it is a nuts moment like you're like wow what is happening here so i think that there is a fandom obviously which is very very important uh, and i think lot of streamers are realizing much like sports people uh, uh, before them but with many more avenues to build that is that their playing career is not going to be around forever like they are not going to be the top of the game forever so they quickly have to build a brand for who they are like scout is much more acerbic he gets angry like he's more like you know what i call virat kohli 1.0 in terms of his like um, mindset but then there's mortel mortel is much more like sachin tendulkar you know very friendly the grand old man of the game so each person has like a personality these squads and teams are getting personality so that's causing a you know tribalism in their fan base so i think that's really important and then people are now creating newer uh, versions of that Uh, the other thing that's happening, which is really interesting, which I've seen on our platform, is that, for example, in the south, uh, you know, we've seen that people have more uh, PCs or PC uh, population is more anecdotally, and you're seeing GTA getting crazy content. Like, if you watch that content, it is so fun, um, and these guys are all playing playing GTA all the time. So it's you know newer forms, as as Manish rightly pointed out, as newer forms of content come out, we want to see newer and newer content creators also come in and do better. Uh, and create new forms of uh, content the other thing that's happening is that localization is also happening right so you have streamers from different parts of india they speak a certain way they tell you about you know certain things in their life because these are long streams they're streaming for 8 hours often so they talk about their everyday life i ate this i did this so the relatability factor comes in as well and i think that's something that only live and authentic has right which is i see the person sitting in a chair like they're not there is no uh, the pretense is less right so they are being themselves they tell you what happened i you know i didn't do well in this game or my day is going badly or is going well whatever so that's there and then they interact with fans a lot and i think that's where we also as a platform are 
looking to improve and increase the interactivity uh, interactivity between streamers and 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 viewers and i think the the interesting thing is what people have realized and i think manish touched on it very rightly is that lockdown did one important thing which is that seeing a guy in a chair or a girl in a chair speaking is not a weird thing anymore people are like oh, okay it's cool they're just they're on zoom kar rahe right like it's like just normal thing and i think that's important and i always use the lens of someone who you know growing up i didn't have the resources to travel all the time the only way i could travel was by watching tv i was watching uh, sport seeing what different stadiums look like watch you know some night geo or something and see oh this is what the rest of the world looks like and today you can experience if you play and i play a lot of bgmi is like you can find people from around india and they hang out on these in these maps so they know each other some people are competitive so then you know i get completely smashed in those and they always abuse me that how why did you come in my team but uh, others will just hang with you saying oh where are you from how's life in bombay like as if like bombay is some other country right because they have never visited they don't know and they are seeing it now from a lens of another person often they think i'm younger than i am but you know that's that's a great new form of hang out as well so i think in terms of time spent it's it's uh, you know pretty crazy and the viewership trends change so when the game uh, when pubg mobile got banned then it became just all about live streaming like i want to be hanging out with these streamers as the games come back the esports interest has again improved significantly i would say and actually we are seeing crazy numbers on esports tournaments right now it will change again this is just normal viewership people will get kind of bored of it then you will go to what these role playing games like i'm saying people are seeing that but for that new newer forms of content I have to release right apex legends is releasing today so we all are excited about it but whatever there could be uh, some other role playing game some fun games those things uh will improve uh, the quality of content and we are not nowhere close to uh, uh you know how many streamers uh, will ultimately emerge in india so just picking up on your point anirudh about them speaking of bombay like a different country altogether which points towards the increasing penetration right it's there in tier 2 there in tier 3 there in tier 4 everywhere so from a platform's perspective how does one think of cultivating some of these streamers similar to say what a tiktok did by building their own stars right so how does a platform how should a platform think about cultivating their own streamers so this is my personal theory i mean i don't know other people don't share it in the market so you know i'm a bit different on that front so i believe in the sort of blockbuster theory of entertainment which is that you, the easiest way to create a star is to align them with another star right you launch uh, you know anushka sharma by putting her in a movie with shahrukh khan then anushka is also a star and you can launch someone else with anushka right? this is the old way youtube was also built this way actually um so this is not some like rocket science have come up with so there are people who are already popular the first guy who will win a tournament like soul uh, which is a, a very well known team right all the members the people who cycle through that they are all famous today because they won the first big tournament you know tsm entity which now some people are in this team called god like they are all famous because they won the first few tournaments you remember Like it's like the eighty-three moment. You remember who won those first tournaments, but they now can give, you know, their sheen to other people, and so there is a content way to do it, and then there is obviously a product way to do it. So, for example, we look at, you know, things like who is pro, who is getting the most live watch hours with the best quality, right? What are the who is getting the regular amount of chat, right? Is the chat long, you know, are is the chat garbled, right? And then we actually have physical people go watch the stream to see is there any. you know cuz some people you know they do some fraudulent methods also on these streams so removing that and keeping a great quality of uh, entertainment promoting the right people up uh, in fact we have a tab on on loco which i think no other game streaming app had which is only for new streamers right the discovers tab is actually to discover new people versus you know in discover instagram you get the same you know 5 10 kind of uh, genres so so it's really important uh, to provide that platform as a uh, you know as a platform we need to do that the interesting thing is if i show you uh, like i was saying earlier the spread of cities and towns you're going to get tier z like i don't even know that those tiers exist like 100 plus cities and towns have been uh, formed and honestly our uh, geographic uh, you know uh, precision there is not great um uh, because i've done user interviews where i last the guy um ki aap jaipur mein ho and he'll say nahi bhai main to 4 ghante dur rehta hu jaipur se wo bas mera phone mein hoga us din jaipur pe to aapko laga main jaipur se hu 
मैं यूनिवर्सिटी जाता हूँ जयपुर में इट टेक्स मी टू आर सो मोस्ट डेज आई डोंट इवन गो सो आई जस्ट प्ले फ्रॉम माई होम एंड देन टू थ्री गाइज गेट टूगेदर एंड दे वॉच विद मी बिकॉज आई है फोन आई मीन देर इज देर आर क्रेजी स्टोरीज ऑफ दिस शॉर्ट यू गो टू यू नो अश्विन माई पार्टनर वॉज ट्रेवलिंग इन केरला ड्यूरिंग द लॉकडाउन ऑल द किड्स वो प्लेंग फ्री फायर right so it's everywhere in uh, india and i think the the long tail as we call it gets created when there is a head of the tail so that head is important it starts creating the uh, the sheen that gives uh, access uh, gives kind of access to newer talent from the tail and that's what we are also doing and actually if you see today we have a fairly long tail of streamers and a lot of these guys say you know they want to get the local contract some of them want uh to show their game so that other people and teams can watch it um some of them feel that okay and they're starting small also they i've seen people put local guys uh, like some local advertisers logo on their stream so there's this this sort of uh you know excitement of building your own business that's also coming right we have streamers who started i mean we have two three very famous guys they are in small towns one is you know in a village near karnal in haryana they started just as one person they had an old computer and they used to just go live and used to use his phone and go live and but he was very regular and he is basically now become so big on the platform he's got a sister to become a, a streamer his brother to become a streamer and he used to tell me hey doesn't matter if i'm there or my brother is there i say yes the, the brother you gave him a new channel you don't have to share your channel and give him another channel you know so they they are also discovering this uh, form of uh, entertainment and some of it also like they have a uh, you know giveaways etc are big in gaming so they are able to use that as a growth lever um and as they go and then they do local tournaments for example so this is similar to sport and entertainment uh, they are becoming scouts for example they start doing running talent agency right so very similar to how uh, entertainment is built as well so all of these things are happening now and you know that's why like it's it's such an exciting time because the talent you see now i think in in about 2 years you will see regional numbers and people you never thought will reach uh, depths that they can now and you've seen it on youtube before so we've seen this movie before where you know whether it's a total gaming or whether it's ashish chanslani honestly ashish is a good friend of mine and i was when we launched loco i was his first advertiser and his largest advertiser and people used to always make fun of me saying oh why did you give him business who watches his content today is obviously like everybody wants to sign him for a show and stuff right and that's because i've realized that there is entertainment till south bombay then there's entertainment till uh, virar and then there's the rest of the country right and so you have to catch on to what each of these guys likes and and watches and what they find relatable and you're seeing that today across the board in uh, streaming as well yeah yeah anirudh just uh, picking up on what you said right while streamers are excited to make this a business uh and the cost of infra has also reduced drastically post geo do you still feel that there are some limitations to smartphone and data infra especially in tier 2 tier 3 cities and this could be a good segue into the e streaming tooling market right uh is there an opportunity that still remains to be solved on the tooling side see yeah, my view on this again it's my personal view is that uh a lot of this is hardware driven uh and Uh, you know 5g will create new opportunities on this for sure um, there are we are working with a very large hardware manufacturer right now to do a loco mode in the phone where you can actually get the most optimized setting for your phone but even if you look at the pc market usually the big streamers have two uh, pcs one is the pc where they play one is the pc where they stream from um when you come down to the mobile streaming the beginner streamers need a uh, streaming solution because they will not invest in a Uh, in a laptop or a or a desktop so there we have a solution there are others also omlet of course is a very is the most famous i would say in that community uh, when we started that was the name you heard the most and you know obviously tj is here so we can talk about it a bit more but uh, i think there is a challenge there there is significant lag uh, that shows up your phone heats up uh, these phones are not often if they're not the top end phone you, you will often find that uh you know the performance of the phone declines significantly if you're streaming and gaming because both use resources of the phone pretty heavily so you need the phone to plug into something else so that that takes away the streaming load if you're streaming every day gaming by itself i think we are in a relatively better spot on the streaming side the other problem that you often see is like there's jitter right because people are not on uh wired internet and even if they're wired they're on wifi so there's you know you know up and down so how do you know if someone's not disconnected for example right uh, so there are those kind of problems which 
honestly most of the problems that uh, exist today the answer there is not going to be um, you know um, you know some software solution there has to be a a hardware solution that comes in and and there are people in the hardware world working on it which is why we are trying to work with them to say that okay this is what our streamers need this, come test with us provide those modes and i think you know enough i feel like you know as you go to 5g and beyond you're moving rapidly to a world where everyone has a good standard uh, smartphone and 5g internet so this change in infrastructure will make the market conditions even more conducive for publishers to do what manish was saying and in 4g i would you know 4g and before 4g people watched after that they want to interact and and create so you will see the percentage of creators and people who attempt it will also improve so uh, you know whether it's latency reliability battery usage all of those will improve uh, but there are there are issues today it's not i don't know of any streamer to give you a reverse stat of any quality who's not using a desktop to stream today they're obviously playing on their phone but they're all connected to the to to the desktop streaming on phone is is hard yeah i think would be a good opportunity to get tk in here because he's been running omnet which was one of the first e streaming tools out there right tj what are the key pain points that uh, you're solving for the gamers in your geographies and, and uh, tj sure. maybe if you can overlay overlay that also with i guess you know opportunities in in markets which are like you know unique like india with with all the sort of challenges around you know data and bandwidth and smartphone quality would be helpful if you can you know maybe sort of weave that in as well Sure. Uh, so I think that you know streaming from mobile is a little bit of a different sort of experience for people than than being a pro streamer. It's sort of how you get your feet wet a lot of the times. And you know, for what we see is that people sort of uh, you know diverge down one of two paths. Like one path is they realize that this is a community activity, and I'm reaching a small group of people that. i really want to you know play with and show off to get together and so they end up forming like a kind of not a celebrity community but more like a a little local league uh or they go down the route of you know they start to get a lot of supporters and a lot of following and they diversify into more channels they get enough donations they buy hardware and they're doing all different kinds of things at that point And so I think that you know like we look at the mobile as sort of the the gateway into that. And whether you know you start with the mobile content it's free to play lots of people are playing it so it gives you that opportunity to sort of break into that market with that backdrop of something to support you with content while you're trying to see do I have the personality and the engagement with my audience to do this. Uh but you know different people will just be able to have that kind of a uh, presentable personality. And so I think that, you know, the actual market for people who are like interested in this are maybe 10 or 20% of people would really go and stream themselves, you know, if you're looking at sort of the under 30 age group. And some of them actually look at it like, you know, I could go make a video, but that's really hard, right? Like I have to do all this editing and all that crap. Like I I don't want to do that. like i want to be me like these streamers they get to get up there and be themselves and that's really fun for everybody who's involved right so they they actually like that it's you know lower production and more you know earnest and so you know there's going to be so many people trying this out and you know there's a lot of opportunity for for people to try it out again and again when each game comes out and see if you know they develop themselves to be able to actually take on that challenge Uh, and so i think that you know just as the hardware and the networks get up to par you just have more people who can break through that boundary because we kind of we kind of see it like you know when the networks are bad maybe only 20% of streamers who go try it out have a chance to get their personality to show through and when the phones are too weak you know that puts a gating factor on it but that keeps getting more and more and more and so you know the mobile gives the chance for people to show that off try it out and so it's important to really capture the uh, those folks who do make it and like do something cool with them you know get them into a, your own agency or something like that uh or to you know take a different tack and focus on the community side of that and and what you can do you know out of that 
Yeah, I, I actually wanted to just add, this is the same journey we've seen in India as well. Like when you start, they'll start, like for example, we have local studio, they'll start on local studio. So you'll see a lot of people, 10,000 people, and we've provided obviously incentives to get them started as well. And and they they start and then they diverge as, as TJ is saying. Some people are happy being small, but they will never be, you know, obviously the guys who are making tons of money, they're doing it for fun and there are enough of them and they actually watch a lot of other streams. So they're a very critical yeah, part of uh, the community. So, and they will report. And so we consider them like power users. They always report other people. These guys are doing fraud. This guy is a great player. This guy is very great talent. Have you heard of this guy? Um, so they are like your hardcore guys and hardcore users. And uh, then obviously people diverge. As soon as I've seen even, I want to say 30K subscribers, 40K subscribers, people immediately buy a uh, uh, laptop. Uh, and then they start from there. So I agree with TJ, as things improve, that funnel will broaden. And that's how you will see more people trying. And once they try, it's only when they'll know whether they're, they're good or not. Yeah. And, and TJ and Anirudh, I think we are also seeing a lot of Indian startups which provide these free tools first as a key GPM, right? And then look to build distribution or monetization. What do you think about the strategy? And do you think that the strategy could be leveraged to build that distribution? Uh, can you repeat the first part? You br we're breaking up on my end. So, TJ, you said, right, that uh, there are a lot of these free tools nowadays coming up to democratize e streaming. And we are seeing that yeah. in India as well. Uh, several Indian startups are providing these tools to the long tail of gamers as a key GTM and then look to build that distribution on the platform, right? Do you think that's a viable strategy? Do you think uh, tools can be leveraged to build distribution? Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like we did this, so and I know it can be done. Um, but uh, I think it's much more competitive now. So I would say that you know the amount of free organic users you get from having like a super duper streaming tool now is like half what it was two years ago. Uh, so there's there's just that much more pressure out there and more opportunities out there for people to do it. I think that you know it's really about looking at your funnel and seeing who you wanna capture because all the people that you bring in, you know, they will eventually graduate if they're those most valuable users, if you don't capture them or if you don't, you know, give them a community to feed into. And so I think, you know, instead of necessarily just thinking of it as long tail, like I have this tool and we'll get a lot of people doing a lot of different things you know, that's a backdrop, that's your market research, that you'll get some of that, but you have to find certain ones that really work and like double down on them in some kind of way, like creator programs that support them or cultivating those communities, doing something with it. So it's, it's about finding other niches and there's, there's tons, right? So I think that's the place where if there's a lot of competition in the space and the um, opportunities for having pretty easily accessible ability to build these tools, you know, the barriers are going down and down, right? So, you know, people are going to have to focus on the operations niche to really stay differentiated and then build a business. Yeah, I mean, I personally don't think that's a good GTM for India um, because, um, you know, when you're going to market, you have to know, I think TJ put it really well what time frame you're in and what sort of market conditions exist, right? So what worked five years ago may not work today and what works today will not work five years later, right? So that's something that's, that's a market awareness you need to have. Um, you know, the TikTok method that, okay, like it's a romanticization of how things work, which is, okay, I'm going to create a point and shoot and it'll work well. It worked well because the editor had the most value there. Because what, you know, when I use Musical.ly the first time, and there's a big reason we didn't actually build it, and maybe we should have, given what happened later. Uh, I mean, obviously, we didn't have any policy uh, crystal ball, but I was just blown away at the quality of the product. Like, I was like, I can create an MTV-style video, which I watched as a kid, for free. Like, this is insane. And, but that doesn't happen so much with streaming, because a lot of mobile streaming, as TJ and I were mentioning earlier, is a hardware limitation, not a software problem. And so what is really happening? You're basically getting a screen capture, then you're putting some Agora audio rooms, right? This is a clunky solution. So unless you have a, actually have a 10x better solution where it's going to make it lag free or your phone won't heat up, most of these are not 
the 10 x solution that you need for mobile streaming to become a uh, uh you know viable so that will i like i was saying earlier will yeah. come from uh hardware um and you know uh, and you can see this even on uh you know in the pc world you know we compare uh stream labs to what happened with twitch right that's a simple comparison and as tj is saying uh, one of the things which i liked about omelet when we were uh, looking in 2019 they also had a front end where you could actually watch streams and there was a community element that they were going for versus saying okay look this is a way this be like stream labs where we just uh, uh, you know let you stream right so i think the tools market is relatively smaller and what you will continue running into is either a graduation problem where they'll say okay and now my business is valuable so the top of the funnel just leaps uh, or they're going to be like running into tech problems which is that if you are uh, a streaming tool which is servicing youtube youtube is never servicing you they won't even return return your call right so you don't know why something failed like today and you can go on my on our instagram page there are many times where i reply to people and then they nail me publicly like you will see it this is like a common you know my self esteem gets completely ruined every hour um, and they use very colorful language but actually they are great users because then they reply to me on instagram privately and we do sessions with them to figure out what happened because these are not usual cases because we're testing out the usual cases these are edge cases which is what twitch has gotten good at on pc for example like these software like again this is sorry to go into the philosophy but like a lot of what looks like a smooth platform is a bunch of edge cases cases that they've taken care of already they yeah. know that this stuff is going to break in like 10 different ways at different scale levels so you need to have that front end because what will happen is un- if you don't do that today you're going to have a tool by the time you build some community some guys have already built the front end and then you're kind of stuck because you don't have the front end all your streamers is going there because you have no way to keep them so that community element is critical whoever the community is with they will definitely definitely benefit and i think you can see that in in twitch right and i always remind my team of the uh, one of my favorite blog posts by mark andreessen of the pro- the product market fit is that just a good enough product can also win if there's a big market and you're solving their basic problem Twitch didn't even have rewind for a long time, right? When you think about esports viewership, like that's the number one feature they've asked us for. But they've really invested in that community, and the community knows that. So they don't just leave them like just because YouTube has rewind, right? So that part of it, I think that's why I'm saying the tooling for me is not um, not such a hot way of actually building. It's a good business by itself. It can be, mm. you know, it can be like a SaaS business. Then then you're in a different world, and you guys are better evaluators of that than I am. Thanks for tuning in. For more Matrix Moments episodes, you can head to www.matrixpartners.in/matrixmoments. You can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube for more updates.